Welcome back to Arise News. I'm Charles Zanier Gordon. Now let's return to that story about Burundi, where at least 26 people were killed at the weekend by an armed gang in the northeast of the country. It follows large demonstrations across Burundi against a controversial referendum on Thursday, which could see President Pierre Nkurunziza stay in power until 20. 34. Witnesses in that province near the border with the DRC say the armed group went from house to house shooting, stabbing victims and setting fire to the house. It's not clear who carried out the attack, but witnesses said the gunmen warned that this was the first in a series of attacks to come and that they would come back and kill people who vote yes during the constitutional referendum. Well, for more on this, I'm delighted to say that the reported, uh, I mean, about these reported killings and the political crisis in the Great Lakes uh, country, I'm joined now live from our London studios by Emery Igiraneza, who's editor of BurundiDaily.net. And Emery, we were hearing that this was an attack by gunmen who came across the border from the DRC and attacked people in the village of Ruhagarika in the district of Buganda. I mean, what more can you tell us about that attack? What are you hearing? Uh, yes, Charles, you're right. Uh, the attack occurred um, in the night, and uh, there are too many versions about really uh, who these people are and where they came from. Uh, because she said uh, that they came from DRC, but witnesses on the ground actually suggest that they came from within inside the country. And in fact, it could be very uh, hard to imagine them coming from DRC because they would have closed uh, the uh, uh, position of uh, Burundian soldiers and polices, and that would have been impossible to pass unnoticed. So what happened and what uh, the uh, residents are saying is that these people actually were in the country. Now, we uh, really uh, don't know whether they are uh, militia that came uh, out from outside the country or whether really they are people who were, you know, uh, who are used by uh, the government or uh, any other person inside the country. What we know, though, is that uh, they targeted uh, families, uh, people who are living peacefully in their homes, and it is happening during this time of referendum, as you suggested. People have been campaigning saying that whosoever will tend to vote uh, against this referendum uh, will meet, you know, uh, punishments, including death. And this region, Buganda and Chibitoke, the province in which it occurred, is, uh, uh, is known to be supporting the opposition leader, Agatha Rwasa, who is telling people to vote no. That's very interesting, Emery, because what we heard was that the, the gunmen were actually saying, uh, telling people that they would come back and kill all those who vote yes. But obviously, you've got a better handle on what is happening in uh, Burundi. Um, and of course, you, you, you're saying that the reason this particular village was targeted was because it, was, it supports the opposition and it's not just a random choice. And I understand that the gunmen were wearing military uniforms, which meant that the villagers were not particularly worried about their security. Uh, that's right, Charles. Uh, this happened uh, at about 300 uh, you know, meters from uh, where the military position is located. So for these people to come and kill, shoot people, take even the time to burn some of those victims live. Uh, this required them to be assured of their security. You couldn't have come from outside the country and start killing people without worry at all and finish your mission and even get time to warn others and go back to where you came from. Uh, this, there is a mystery behind this whole story. But what we know is this, you know, Burundi during this time of elections, be it presidential or referendum, uh, there are these kind of killings. Even some people can take this opportunity to actually use the vacuum of leadership that is there 
to do what they want to do. Uh, Burundi, for now, uh, Burundians are worried about this referendum, obviously, because uh, for sure for us who know uh, the uh, dynamics of Burundian politics, we know that more is to that referendum that will cause so many killings than before. Right, just remind us of what this referendum is about, Emery, and how it would allow President Nkurunziza to run again and again for the top job in Burundi, briefly. Um, very good. That's very good, uh, Charles, to know, because uh, as you know, uh, back in 2015, uh, this is uh, where this president decided to run again, against the current constitution. And then, prior to that, he had attempted to change the constitution through the parliament, and uh, uh, parliament rejected that. They refused to change the constitution, but he said that it will be changed anyway. So now he decided, after he was elected, to now change this constitution uh, through the referendum. We know all that this referendum is just uh, a name uh, behind which he's doing his own desire of remaining on power forever. Because we know that the result will be, uh, you know, it will be voted, uh, you know, yes, and it will be adopted as Burundian constitution, even though people can massively vote against it. So President Kulunziza's ambition is to remain on power without limit. And he's actually trying to, to convince people indirectly that he is actually king. In fact, a lot of people now in the position believe his ambition is to be considered as a king of Burundi. And if you look at different things he does socially and politically, uh, you can see this ambition coming. And uh, what is worrying uh, about this, this referendum in the new constitution is just because it is going to divide Burundian a lot. Remember, Burundians are, uh, Burundi is a fragile state. Uh, the peace that we had uh, was a result of the Arusha uh, Accord, where uh, the Tutsi and the Hutu agreed to live in peace and forget the past. But now what is happening, this president is using this situation to just try to say that he's actually uh, trying to forget about that uh, Arusha Accord, forget about the minority uh, protection, and then uh, give the power to those who are the majority. But we know that the majority of Hutu actually don't support him either. They want peace. They want to live in peace uh, with uh, the Tutsi and other people in Burundi. Nkurunziza is pursuing this because of his own interest. And this interest is to remain on power with a few that are with him. Emery Igeraneza, thank you very much indeed. Emery is, of course, the editor of uh, BurundiDaily.net, uh, and he joined us there from our studios in London. Emery, thanks very much indeed.